Testing LLMs in the real world use case is really challenging because everybody's use case is very different. So I thought, why can't I use GPT-5 plus cursor and create a Python library? Now this is a Python package, but also a CLI command level interface where I can just type some command and it is going to do certain things for me. And this video, I'm going to show you every single step that I took to arrive at this Python package, including writing tests. This is not wipe coding. This is like proper programming using GPT-5. Let's get started. So we are going to ask GPT-5 to create a Python package or just to be clear, a CLI tool called ConfRadar. The idea here is that we are going to have list of conferences whenever I type that command. And this is, uh, if you have never used CLI, you want it to be colorful, you want it to have some kind of interface. There are some Python libraries like Rich and Typer that can do this for you, but I am not giving any specification. This is the only prompt and this is not even maxed out. So this is GPT-5 thinking and I want Cursor and GPT-5 to work it out for me to decide what kind of tools that they're going to use. And I'm just saying that I want a colorful list of options then uh, it should have upcoming conferences. So this is the prompt I've sent it. And as you can see here, it started thinking, it started planning what it should ideally do. And you can see I am, I'm already inside a folder called Confrader on the left hand side, you can see currently Confrader is completely empty. But as you see later in this video, this tool GBT5 is going to start adding more code and we are going to see more and more files coming along there. And now you can see that it is it is planning what kind of implementation that it should do for CLI functionality, how it should do, what kind of commands should be there, whether it should be with the dash dash, whether it could be with slashes. I'm not giving anything at all. I'm not adding any detail. And you can see that it already started creating pyproject.toml and uh, you can see that basic files are being created. But if you know Python, you might notice something very weird and strange right now. So if you go to the line number one, you can see that the first line, very first line itself, there is a big blunder by GPT-5, which is there is an intendation error. I mean, like you don't make this error being the PhD level model, but it was strange that this is the error. I mean, like of all the errors, this is the error that GPT-5 has done, but let it, let it figure it out. Like it's going to run the code and it is going to, in, it's installing the libraries. It installed this particular library. I'm going to allow it to run every command that it wants. And it has figured out that there is an intendation error and it is investigating the intendation error thought for three seconds. It has decided to fix it. It is both in the CLI.py and it is also in the init.py. So in both the files, it has to ideally fix the intendation error. Honestly, the biggest shock for me in this entire exercise is that GPT-5 being such a great model and making an intendation error is something that I never ever thought about it. I don't know why this happened. It could be like, an implementation within cursor, but um, yeah, there is an intendation error and it somehow managed to figure out that and uh, it started working towards solving it and it has already solved for this in init.py file and it is going to do it for the next files as well. Now that it has done everything, we have got the very basic form of CLI available and it is working. You can see that it ran the code confrader and then it is showing confrader. You are radar for upcoming tech conferences and it has bunch of options like list all, filter by topic, filter by country. I think it's filter by country. And uh, we can open it in the terminal and then we can see what kind of things that we have got. Search by name and quit. So we have all these options. This is the most basic form and uh, I think GPT-5 is trying to test whether this works. So you can do a bunch of tests here. So I can give number one, number two, number three, whatever the number that we want. And it is going to do the task for us. And then we are going to see the result. So I said PyCon and then it gave me PyCon 2025 when it is going to happen, um, when um, it is like what kind of topics it is part of done. Now that we have done the very basic part, now it's time for us to move forward. A few more improvements currently GPT is saying that it is done and uh, it is listing out what all things that it has done and how I can run this. There is like things like list the uh, shows, uh, all those things are there. I want to just open it in my terminal and run it, not just within cursor, but like literally on my terminal. And as you can see here, I'm able to successfully run it within my folder, which is confrader where virtual environment is activated. And this works exactly like I expected. There is conference, uh, there is color, there is a table, there is a list of conference. I can filter by topic, country, search by name. And if I want to quit, I can quit. So the basic testing is successfully done, but uh, I think this is 
still a very basic form of um, let's say a CLI. Uh, let's do one level above. Let's say that if I want this to be slightly better, what should I do? So, okay, it looks cool. Can you add a TUI? TUI stands for terminal UI. So it's like having a GUI, but within your terminal, there are a bunch of libraries for it. But again, I'm not going to specify any sort of library. The second thing that I want is like, I want some sort of persistence where, uh, you know, you can store the events yourself and then you can store it locally. Like if I want to add a new event. So I'm asking GPT-5 to create those things in such a way that uh, everything is finally packaged as a Python package. And then I can push it to both GitHub as a repository. And also ideally I can push it to PyPy where all the Python libraries are stored for us to download and install, like for anybody to download and install. The moment I send this, GPT is getting to work. GPT-5 is getting to work and it is already planning like what kind of things it has to do. Like for example, for us to push it to GitHub, it is thinking that, okay, I've got to have this, but for us to push it to PyPy, one interesting thing, like honestly, like I, I didn't think about it, but GPT-5 has already started planning that it has to work on a workflow file, which would be tied with GitHub actions. And that would ideally build whatever that is required for PyPy. So, which is very interesting because it came up with this own idea, but for now it is doing the storage part for the persistence that we asked TUI for the terminal user interface. Now it started adding the extra files that are required. For example, publish.yaml is to push it to PyPy. We have got git ignore because we wanted to push it to GitHub. So everything that we asked, it is trying to do. So contributing.md for a file, which, uh, other contributors can come and contribute to this open source repo. There is a readme.md file for us to uh, add how anybody can go download this Python library and then start running it. So all the required files are being added and now it is again testing. As you can see here, it is activating the virtual environment. It is running the file and it is saying, I think it is realizing that there is some kind of a partial initialized module, like some kind of import is not working out. So it is trying to fix that. Like it figured out that error from the command line, from the terminal, it figured out that the error is happening. And then it is trying to fix it itself and uh, which is a good thing. So circular import is being fixed. And uh, after it is being fixed, once again, it is making certain changes. Like for example, core.py is a new file that has been added. There are like changes about how the library import the circular import was used. Those are being changed. Once again, running the confreda command to just ensure that the library works fine. And that now it is giving me the details about how we can push it to GitHub, what kind of things that we have to do. But also it gave me a suggestion, which is very interesting. It says that uh, it can fetch live conference sources. So at the same time, I also noticed that conference.json is a hard coded file. And with the idea that GPT-5 gave me that it can pull a JSON or a RSS sources, I want it to figure out what kind of sources I like. I don't, I can manually add it, but I want it to figure out. So I'm trying to understand if it can like go to the internet and then find out something. And uh, that is what I've said, like uh, I wanted to pull. So you can see that it is telling me that, oh, I can add a JSON URL and then it can pull from there. I can do the confreda refresh. But what I ideally want is to go itself and then pull from certain sources. And you can see here, like we have got a, a very beautiful TUI, which also there is a problem as you might have noticed here, the up arrow and the down arrow is not working fine. Like whenever I'm trying to go up and down, it is technically not working, which shouldn't be the case with the TUI. So I think we have to tell this, like while I could add some sources, ideally GPT-5, you should have added set of sources because you are now letting me do the work while I'm asking you to do the things for me. So get the list of popular conferences so that it there is no cold start problem. There is something that user can refresh and get started. But then if user wants, then user can go and then add it. And also the up and down is not working, which is something that it should ideally easily fix for a TUI interface. The moment I say this, GPT-5 has started working already. Um, I like the speed in which it works. I'm not sure if it is the same speed uh, like a Claude model would get for me here. But here the GPT-5 model has already worked. The, like you can see the up and down arrow is not working on my terminal as well, which is item two. So now it is pulling the sources. You can see the it is searching the web, trying to get information or uh, JSON sources from where, um, you know, um, it can pull 
conference details. So it's looking for all the information on GitHub. GPT-5 believes that it has added new data sources from where I can refresh and also pull and it has also fixed the up and down arrow. So let's see that I can go, I can run this again, Confreder on my terminal, not within cursor, but separately Confreder Interactive, but it is throwing me an error, which I really shouldn't have happened. So I'm going to copy the error, come back here, but just to make sure that, you know, it's not within my terminal, the same error is within my cursor's terminal as well. I'm copying the error, going back to uh, the GPT-5 chat interface. I'm going to paste it here and then say that this interactive Confreder interactive mode brought this weird error for me. And uh, the moment I say this, um, it kind of understands like what it has to do. And it is implementing the bug fix. Once it is done, it is running it again. 121 conferences were fetched from sources. You can see now we have all sort of conference. The date is a little odd and off. Like I could have spent more time to fix it, but I'm not going to spend more time on it. Like it has got January as well even though we ask for only upcoming conferences. So I'm saying like it looks good. Um, you can also see that out of the context window, we have already occupied 21% of context window, which to my surprise is very less. Um, honestly, like I expected more, but uh, it's very good. So looks good. Can you take a, a unit test look? And I mean, it's a very stupid prompt. And then see if I or we missed anything. I mean, I'm trying to say that we are partners here. Also, my email ID is one little coder at gmail.com. So ideally you have to add the email ID to your pi project.toml. So which would uh, go into the configuration of whatever that you want to do with PyPy. Pi. So I'm just giving all the details here and I'm also like uh, letting it uh, confirm if we are ready to go push it to PyPy Pi or like GitHub so that, you know, we have everything that is required. It's already planning the testing bits, which is very important because especially if you're publishing a Python package, we have to make sure that it works for others as well, not just for us. Like it also sees that, you know, you have to mock sometimes API. We don't have... I don't think we have anything to mock at this point because we're not dealing with any APA, but if you're going to build an APA wrapper, then you have to do so. It thought for 22 seconds, it decided that what kind of unit test it has to add. It is adding all those unit tests in a file called test underscore core dot pi because we are testing, uh, you know, core, it has added 35 lines and then it is adding a uh, test underscore sources, which is going to test the sources dot pi. So ideally it is adding all these test bit uh, for each main component that we have in the main file and uh, the test will mirror or uh, make sure validate that whatever we have in the main file uh, doesn't fail. So this is a very important part. I think this is what it differs from wipe coding. Most of the wipe coding doesn't necessarily have like good test cases, but here I'm also not adding test cases, but ideally I'm making GPT-5 to be the manual tester or automated tester, the human tester and write the test case for me and also implement the test cases. And that is what it has done. And it is doing pi test to run and then try to see if the test cases are working fine. And you can see that uh, it is still processing and it says four tests passed in 0.26 seconds. So all the tests are passed. It is giving me instructions about how I can go ahead and then push this to GitHub. And it is also telling me everything about the test cases that it has written, like what kind of tests it has written and information about how I can push this to GitHub. And right now you can see we have occupied 23% of our context window totally, which is still good. Um, we are uh, still within the limit, like way within the limit, so which is good. I'm just running Confreder Interactive just to make sure that, you know, we have not messed up anything with the the recent effort that we have done going up and down, everything works fine. The color highlight, I think we are good to go at this particular point. We can go ahead and then see only one thing probably I found very weird is that within the um, interface, you can see the topics were empty. So I'm just saying that, okay, sorry, one thing looks like topics are missing for most conferences. If it can add, it is well and good, but if it cannot add, then I don't have any problem. It's just like something that I wanted to bring it up and then see if a GPT-5 can solve for this. Managed to find some way to add some kind of conferences topics, um, not for everything, but at least it's an improvement from what it was before. So I can just go here and then say conference, configurator list JavaScript, and it's going to give me JavaScript related conference which is a good thing. So whatever we expected has happened so far. And so I think we are good to go put it in GitHub, publish it on GitHub. So I'm going to go create a GitHub repository in the same name Confreder, because this is going to give us the remote repo, which will link it in the current repo, which will be my local repo. So Confreder is created. I've got the link and I'm pasting the link here so that it can just go ahead and then start doing whatever it has to do, like add the remote link and uh, you know, just um, add all the files, commit all the files. You can also see that I've uh, made it create the commit messages automatically, 
which is something that i absolutely love about cursor i mean if you are a developer uh, you know a lot of developers do not add commit messages properly so we have successfully pushed the most consistent uh, better version of confreder to my github repo and it is available under mit license and it has also kicked off uh, and i also added a screenshot later on it has also added kicked off the workflow um, the workflow to publish it in pypy but uh, unfortunately the github action has failed which with some weird error i want to copy the error here and then just go give it to cursor for it to figure out what has happened and for it to start aiming to fix it upon giving the screenshot it has already decided to fix it uh, it is analyzing the github actions error and then it knows what it has to do and then it is working on a fix and the good thing here is that now all our messages like everything that it is going to make a change is like a local change and it itself will also go ahead and then start pushing it so which is a good thing for us to keep a version control track so if something gets messed up like cursor is doing something terribly bad and then it has completely ruined our code we can still roll back to our code and uh, just get it back from github so always version control your code especially like if you're not like just working on something fun but if you're trying to do something meaningful then it is very important so as you can see here it is trying to run the code and then making sure that everything that is required for us to put it back on github with the right workflow that will ideally build is doing and it build a local build like it has created a whl file a tar.gz file just to check locally if our python library is ready like this is like the built version of python library which ideally will go to the pypy so locally the build is getting successful so it's going to push the workflow back again into github and all i have to do is it is telling me that i have to bump up the version tag again and then push it this will kick off the publishing workflow which will ideally end up sending the file to pypy and you can see at this point we have filled in 29 percent of context window i've pushed it to github and you can see that the workflow has been kicked off again and then everything is sorted for us to go ahead and then share it with this entire world simply using gpt51 cursor we have successfully built a python cli tool that anybody in the world can work and also benefit from i hope this was a helpful tutorial going through my errors going through the issues that gpt5 created but let me know what you feel about it but i think gpt5 is extremely fast for coding related tasks i know there are like mixed responses in the developer community about this model if you are not somebody who is paying a lot of money for cloud i think gpt5 is going to be extremely helpful but if you are already paying a lot of money for cloud then i don't think it makes a lot of difference See you in another video. Happy prompting.